So let's go over how to create the most basic of shaders to get the syntax down. In order to create a shader, uh, there's a couple ways to do it, but might as well use the Create menu and Create Shader. I already have one created, so we'll open that up. Uh, what we're going to do with this is try to emulate what the built-in shaders are doing. So when you select a material and then select a shader from that menu that we're looking at here, you'll see a bunch of shaders that don't have submenus, some that have, uh, there's one menu here and then multiple shaders inside, and then you can also see uh, multiple nesting levels as in transparent cutout, there's a few in there. So, in order to make a shader, you need to have the word shader to start off with, and then you give it a name, like we were just looking at. So, if we had, take out everything before the slash, just have, and then save that, so we have shader black, you'll see that black is now in the main menu. And by putting in something with the slash, then we can have the submenu, and that's really good for organization, so I recommend uh, using as many sub, sub uh, folders as you need to make things organized for yourself. So after the word shader and the name, then you need to have the entire shader wrapped in curly braces. I don't understand the rationale for that. Um, there's not going to be anything that comes outside of these braces other than the word shader and that name. So you'll see that in my own shaders, I don't really res I, I don't respect the, um, those braces for indentation. I just treat whatever comes between these two braces as the first level of indentation. I also don't see a, a need for the word shader considering the extension of the file is shader, but just so you know, that's what you need to do in order to make things work. So that's what we will do. Uh, capitalization is unimportant. Just type things uh, so it makes the most sense to you and uh, you can come up with your own style in terms of capitalization. All right, so after what we've already mentioned, we need the word subshader. Every, every shader must have at least one subshader. And for the iPhone currently, you will never have more than two, or you shouldn't have any more than two, because there are only two GPUs available right now. And a subshader is designed to be um, something that will run on a particular GPU. So after we have the word subshader, we will need the word pass, and pass refers to descending all of the vertices and other data to the GPU in order to have things rendered. So without a pass, you wouldn't be rendering anything, so you'll get an error if you don't have everything we've mentioned so far. And that is the bare minimum that you need to have a shader, and what that will do is render something as black. So we have a black cube. I don't really recommend, if you actually need something to be black, that you leave it as that, because you're not, uh, it's not actually defined as black here. You don't know in the future if that's what Unity Technologies is going to decide to keep for their default. Um, but since I've been uh, studying shaders in Shader Lab, it's always been black. So that's what that does. You also may see in other shaders the word fallback and then the name of another shader. You don't need to worry about that really in the iPhone shaders because we know exactly what our hardware is. If we were trying to target multiple uh, GPUs like we would on the desktop and we don't have any clue what the users are going to have, then fallbacks are a very good idea, but we don't need to worry about them in this tutorial series, so you won't see me using that. Here's a little trick for creating a material that's based on a shader you've written. I don't think it's documented, but it's been very handy to me. So you select your shader in the project view, and then you can go to create and hit material. You'll then get a new material that uses the shader you just created, and it will share the name of that shader. So we can assign that back to our queue. We're good to go. And one last trick for this tutorial is updating the shader in Unity when you're in your code editor. Uh, for the last version of Unity iPhone, the official release, at least at this point it is still the official release, Unity iPhone 1.7, whenever you made a, made a change in your text editor and saved that, then even if Unity was in the background, 
it would update that shader. However, that is not the case with the new style of editor that was introduced with Unity 2.5 and continues to be used for Unity 3.0. Uh, that might change in the future, but for the time being, there's kind of a way to get around that. So let's go ahead and ruin the shader just by commenting out pass. That will break everything. We'll get an error immediately. However, the shader won't actually update. It'll still be working. But And if we went back to Unity, we'd see that being broken. But there's a faster way. Go back to Unity one more time to see it working this time. So comment that out. Get the error. And now, in order to see things update, just move your... Uh, cursor back over Unity to give the scroll wheel focus and then just scroll in or out. And there you go, shader's updated. It's not quite as nice as having it updated immediately, but it's nicer than having to switch applications. So let's fix that, and then we'll scroll out a bit, and it's fixed.